Thank you. <laughs> Hello. So um, I want to start with this image because um, Pat and June asked me to say, "How did I find the incredible Dame Steve Shirley?" And it was. Oops, go back. Yeah, sorry. Um, I'm lucky to be part of something called Silicon Valley Comes to the UK, and we take a bunch of us techies here in San Francisco. We go to London, Cambridge, Oxford, and we work with the techies there. And we were lucky to be at uh, the, the awards for the hackathon at 10 Downing Street. They gave us a tour, and during the tour, they showed us uh, this portrait. And someone said, "Of course, you know who Lady Ada Lovelace is." And I said, "I don't have any idea who she is." And、uh, this caused my friend Lynette Webb and I. Once we found out who she is, she's the first programmer in the world.、Um, she's credited, yeah. So in 184, in the 1840s, she was friends with、uh, Charles Babbage, who created the first mechanical computer. Her father is Lloyd, Lord Byron, and her mother was a terrific mathematician. And to keep her from the poetry wild ways of her father, she taught her a lot of mathematics. And so, when she met Babbage, she started to look at what he was doing, and she was translating a piece.、Um, and she added this entire essay, which Walter Isaacson just shared with me that he was in the、uh, Byron collection, the Bodleian Library, and read this documentation. And she basically waxed poetic about this idea of programmability. Could there be?、Um, could could you weave numbers the way the Jacardian loom works? She talked all the way to mathematics. So one of the things that we did was we started to look at a doodle for her.、And、so you can see her up there in the top writing. Uh, all the way to iTunes, because in this piece she talks about programmability of music. So we love Ada; she's our founder, and that got me thinking about the lost history of technical women. And so I want everybody to look at the slide. Do you recognize anyone on this screen? A couple of people, probably Grace Hopper. Anybody else? Hedy Lamarr. So Hedy Lamarr, fundamental inventions in sped, spread spectrum and wireless. Also famous Hollywood actress. She's beautiful. Grace Hopper created、uh, the first compiler, invented much of the idea of programming languages, came up with the idea of debugging bugs and that whole code. Over here,、uh, the ENIAC programmers.、Um, you know, the University of Pennsylvania、It、used to be a job called computer. These were the first computers. A hundred women during the war. Rosie, the mathematician,、um, we're working on a film about her that Kathy、uh, Kleiman luckily interviewed、uh, four of the six of them before they died.、Um, they wrote the first sort routines. They were not introduced because people didn't really understand when the ENIAC was there that there was、um, this this programming, this idea of computer science. They thought they were like oiling the machine or something. Bletchley Park. Do you guys know Bletchley Park?、Uh, the Code Crackers, World War II. Also, Rosie, the mathematician equivalent.、Um, More than half of them were women. Of the 10,000 women on the par- people on the park, and they、uh, saved. The, it's estimated 11 million lives, and ended the war two years earlier with their mathematics. Just astonishing heroics.、Um, other people, did you know that there was a parallel set of astronauts, the women astronauts for the Apollo mission? This is a wonderful Wired article. Right stuff, wrong sex. Amazing story about them, and also.、Um, This is、uh, Catherine Johnson, wonderful African American woman. Now 96. There's a Maker's video about her coming. She calculated the trajectories for Alan Shepard, John Glenn, and the Apollo mission. And when John Glenn flew, because they had added computers,、uh, he asked to make sure that Catherine had checked the math, or he would not fly. And she、uh, was part of authoring 26 papers, but her name is only on one of them at NASA. She's an amazing person. So many, many, many stories. So the history we need to resurrect it. And last thing I'll quick share with you is、uh, from the Jobs movie, just current contemporary stories. We just the movie just came out. But for some reason, Joanna Hoffman, the product manager of the Macintosh. Or Susan Kerr at the top of the pyramid there, the designer of all the graphics and icons and much of the icons that you've ever seen in your life.、Uh, we're not in the film; they didn't speak. So we need help to bring these stories back. And so I was lucky. My friend、uh, Lynette Webb made this film about Dame Steve Shirley, which raises my awareness of the astonishing things that she did in England. And we want to share that film with you. Thank you. Because of the sexism of the day, I found that signing my business development letters, Stephanie Shirley, Shirley being my marital name, got no response whatsoever. 
my dear husband of now over 50 years, suggested that I use the family nickname of Steve. Uh, things began to take off. I've been Steve ever since. I was born in Germany at a time of horrendous discrimination, and my parents did a very brave thing. They organised for me to come to England uh, into the arms of strangers on something called a kinder transport, which brought 10,000 unaccompanied child refugees to this country in 38 and 39. That two and a half day journey with the preceding problems associated with it has made an enormous difference to my life. I love mathematics even at school and much to my school's horror, I wanted to study mathematics and girls' schools in those days didn't really do science. I really fought to be taught mathematics and uh, had to transfer to the boys' school. And that was a useful introduction to the sexism of the workforce when I actually joined them. I lived in the country and uh, like many people really, I came to London because that was where everything was happening. My mother bought a little house and a lodger that she had living with her at the time introduced me to the post office research station at Dollis Hill. It was a hotbed of about 2,000 graduates, all male. It had a great portico in the front. Research is the door to tomorrow. It made a big impression on me and many other people. I left the public sector in the late 50s and went and worked in private industry for the computer manufacturer, ICL. Everybody would have coffee together in the canteen every, every day because that was where people interchanged information. We were not in little silos. I was a mathematician, you're a scientist, he's an engineer. It was an interesting time where I learned a great deal and became besotted, really, with the computing industry. The reason that I left after a relatively short time was that I hit the glass ceiling. No matter what I tried to do there, I was getting blocked. I gave my notice and decided to set up my own company of women managed by women, driven by women. It would be a company writing software only, and um, it was considered laughable. You can't sell software, it's given away free, and certainly not with women, and certainly not with women working from home. With much thought, I called it freelance programmers, which described what we did. There was a lot of always trying to present ourselves in a most professional way. When the phone rang and to disguise the baby noises in the background, I would have a, a tape playing of, of somebody on a typewriter typing very fast, of course. We did a vast number of early projects concerned with operations research the siting of depots for an oil company, the scheduling of lorries for Tate and Lyle sugar lorries. It remained a woman's company for 13 years until in Britain equal opportunities legislation came in. Although legislation was intended to help women, it meant that this all-woman company had to start employing men. And so we did let the men in uh, as long as they were good enough this great company was eventually owned 25% by its staff. And when we floated on the main London Stock Exchange, um, after that there were over 70 millionaires among the largely female staff. The fact that I nearly died in the Holocaust means that I'm very motivated to make sure that each day is worth living, that my life was worth saving, and that is as strong today, 75 years on. I had built a determination that I was not going to let other people define me, to break through, to do something new, to not be put off by the conventions of the day. I really, really believe that any individual can make a difference. 
male or female, there's so many exciting things going on in the computing industry that if you have an idea, a dream, something that you want to do, then just go for it.